have a biological clock where women like to have certain things done by a certain age at a certain time. It's your plan. It's your business. Some of you want to have children before 30. Some of you want to be married and all like that. And it's, it's perfectly fine for you to want what you want. Men don't have a biological clock. We have a financial clock. And here's his ticket, and he don't have it together yet. And he does not see a way that he can provide, protect, and take care of you. He don't see the clear path. So now he got to back up. Man, what I'm going to give her? She wants this baby. What I'm going to buy? Where we going to live? What kind of conditions we got? I, all I had on this ring, I ain't got no more money. So you got to wait. You got to let this guy catch up. What you all should do is sit down, see if you all can talk it out, help support him, see if you can help him get to where he want so you can get to where you want. Women have a biological clock. So, I kind of agree with Steve Harvey and I don't agree with Steve Harvey. What I agree with Steve Harvey is women do have a biological clock. And men have a, finan a financial clock. I agree with that part, but not what he said after. My agreement with that is women have a biological clock because they do want to have kids at a certain age and do certain stuff at a certain age. But also, especially in urban cities like New York and maybe I'm going to just speak for New York, right? When women get older, women gain weight, a lot of chicks get fat, a lot of pretty beautiful chicks fall off, a lot of bad joints fall off, eating fast food and whatever they eat and they diet or whatever it may be, right? But they progress economically and career-wise. A lot of chicks as they age, as they biological clock heightens and they get older a lot of them get fat sloppy out of shape and everything but a lot of them do advance academically and career wise a lot of them go back to college they be getting degrees they be getting jobs they be in position of power especially now with the agenda with the um you know with the with america trying to turn the black woman and the black man against each other or the latino man and the latino woman against each other right so, women do progress academically and career-wise as they get older. But as they get older, they get fat and all that. So, they do have biological clocks. And time runs out for them biologically. Not all, but a great 90%. Now, with um, men, we do have a financial clock. Because we want a certain amount of chicken by a certain amount of time. We want, a certain lot, we want a certain amount of money by a certain amount of time. You know, no matter what I, what I do when I was in the street life and when I hustle. <clears throat> pardon me, people. Bless me. Alhamdulillah. You know, or when I'm working a job or two jobs or when I'm doing my music or when I'm selling my merch or whatever I'm doing to get to the bag, right? <laughs> I have a buy a lot. I have a financial clock. I have a certain amount of time where I want a certain amount of money by a certain amount of time. And that's to this day. So I might be like, yeah, damn. By the time six months come, I want thirty, forty thousand saved. We talking legal money. We ain't talking crime. People, all you drug dealers, you big willy niggas, all you scammers, all you get money paper niggas. We talking legal money. Saving it up, switching your diet, budgeting your money, and saving up. So I might have a goal. Damn, by six months, seven months, I want forty thousand cash saved. So I gotta work two jobs, save the chicken, do this, do that, whatever it may be. But y'all get the point. But men do have biological clocks, right? Or then in the street life, legal life, or whatever. You see, I had two cans of sardines, and I had a protein shake for lunch, right, for my lunch break. You know, I eat a lot of fish, fruits, and veggies. Y'all know that. But um, I agree with Steve Harvey on that. Women do have a biological clock, and men have a financial clock. I agree. I definitely agree. Hold on, I got one more for y'all people.
one more for y'all. What I did realize is sometimes it's not that I'm not right. Sometimes I'm just not right now. It's not right now. It's not that you're not right. It's just not right now. The ultimate power is position. It's not money. It's position. Because someone in between or at a higher position could determine your fate. And they could have way less money. So when I made that joke about you work at Universal, I could do that because I'm no longer at Universal. So you're no longer the executive that can talk to me like I'm not me. I don't work for you no more. Be in this video game of life. Be your maximum character of who you are. And that's where your ultimate happiness will arrive. So, I agree with Kanye West. He said, be your maximum character. Be you, but to the maximum. On all levels. And that's where your happiness will, will, will be at, right? Basically saying self-belief. Believe in yourself, right? All praise is due to you. Be your maximum character. I'm an iron sheep. Sometimes I dumb myself down. Being humble and trying to be modest. And I be seeing niggas that fake beneath me. Or niggas that think they doing more than me, but they not doing it right. Or whatever it may be. You know, I be seeing certain rappers, they be arrogant. I'm like, this nigga's trash. And he's pussy. And niggas will rob him. But, you know, I be seeing certain rappers, they have this sense of arrogance and conceit. You know, but they're being themselves, I guess, at their maximum. This is character-wise. Me, I remain humble and I try to dumb myself down and be a little modest. I try to have humility, right? But Kanye West saying, be yourself at your maximum. And that's where your happiness will lie. And sometimes I be wanting to do that. Like, niggas going to make me get on my bullshit. Niggas going to make me get on my bullshit. Because, I, you know, I could do a lot of things a lot of ways. But anyway, um, he also said... There's a difference between money and power. When you're in position, you got the power. A nigga can have all the money in the world. But if he ain't in position, he don't got the power. I'm going to tell you how that's right. Epstein and Weinstein was billionaires. Epstein had the bag, Weinstein had the bag, but they wasn't in position. And I'm talking about position of power. That's why them niggas got ambushed. Epstein got locked up, he got life. Quote unquote, he died in a federal penitentiary, we don't know. That's in the air, who cares? But Weinstein got 40 years. It's a difference between having money and it's a difference between being in position. And that's what y'all need, people. You need to get in position. This apply to me, too. I need to get in position. Because there's certain sucker niggas in position. So it don't matter. I'm oh, fucking nail bending. It don't matter how much money you got. It's better to be in position. This is why Bloomberg, even though he was a billionaire, he became the mayor of New York City at that time, right? Because being a mayor put Bloomberg in a position. Fuck the bad. Bloomberg wanted that position because he needed to do certain things and handle his handle. So, yeah, people, you know, Kanye West was right. I agree with him. Steve Harvey was right. You know, these brothers is both influential. You know, they both influential. Now, let me tell y'all what Chaos One said, and then we're going to get to the get to.
Give me one minute. Listen to chaos one say, people. What was whack about hip hop? The worst thing, 1979 Sugar Hill Records, is the worst thing that ever happened to hip hop. When Sugar Hill Records came out, a woman named Sylvia uh, Robinson um, and her husband, Joey Robinson, they owned all of rap. If you could somehow phantom that in your head for a hot minute, there was one record label that had all the top rappers of the day on it, and no other company had that. Had we stuck together, black people would not be in this situation. They say hip-hop is a $10 billion culture every year. That's black people money we should be having. But black people rejected us and lost 10 billion a year. 10 billion a year gone. Whole dream of Dr. King gone. Take it up now to um, Sugar Hill Records. All the greatest hip hop acts are on the label. But they're not getting treated right. Black people are ripping off black people. I say this respectfully because I, 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 you know, I'm talking about our parents. These are older blacks ripping off the talent of younger blacks, respectfully. KRS, Scott LaRock, Boogie Down Productions, B-Boy Records. Black men are taking advantage of young black talent. B-Boy Records was owned by black people. Older black men from the 50s and 60s. You would think, after everything we went through in civil rights, you see a young man coming up, he calls himself Knowledge Reign Supreme. And he's trying to come up, he's homeless, he's in the street, but he's talking that blackness. And you see he got a crowd around him. And you see he got some little talent. You're not going to dust him off and say, yo, young blood, come on, let me show you something. Let me protect you. No, they were the first ones to come in. Rip off me and Scott LaRock for the Criminal Minded album. To this very day, black folks still ripping me off for the Criminal Minded album. To this very day. Because I'm already a wealthy person, I really don't care. So I allow black folk to eat off the album. I allow bootleggers to eat off the album. I allow people to do that. It's not, it doesn't bother me. But if you want to talk principle, Black people are taking it, they're eating their children. They're eating their children. This is the worst thing to happen to not only hip hop, but to black civilization in the United States. Now, we didn't get the money. We didn't get the fame. We, we, we didn't get the Grammy. But we got the soul. What? We didn't get the money. We didn't get the Grammy, but we got the soul, right? There's a lot of rappers with money. There's a lot of money with Grammys, but they don't have the soul. A lot of rappers don't have the soul. They don't have the authenticity. You know these niggas is culture vultures. You know they in hip hop because they, they, they can't be nothing else in life. They like, yo, fuck it. I'm going to try to rap. And they raps be garbage, but they get into the bag. But they don't have the soul. Rakim had the soul. Big Daddy Kane had the soul. Slick Rick had the soul. Different ball game, people. Last thing, Chaos One said, black people robbing off black people. It's been going on since Africa with the different tribes, with the Ashanti selling us into slavery, the Yoruba selling us into slavery, and different other African tribes, right? The Dahomeys and everything else, right? The black people ripping off black people. We are, we are biggest enemy, champ. This has been going on forever. This ain't just start with these drill rappers, people. You know what I'm saying? Education is elevation. Movement is, movement is medicine. Stay diligent and militant. The gods don't mingle with the mortals. Kings don't eat with the peasants. The only time wise men hang around fools is when they educate them or enslaving them. Stay up like a cup. I holler back on my collar crack. We get up like sit-ups. I'm oxygen. Uno. Iron.